Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell, and Paul Woodman. Welcome to episode 16 of Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport roundup. This week, we look back at the Austrian GP, the Formula 3, W Series, and a whole lot more as well. Tiff, first of all, was it a procession with the Austrian GP? Was it as, as straightforward as you thought? Or well, well, first of all, I was a bit distracted watching the, the Austrian Grand Prix because I was at Silverstone watching the Grand Prix track with 50 caterums going back. <laughs> so we better just, once again, Love Cars was there battling. And um, it, a bit more controversy yet again, as there seems to be every week with the Caterham Academy. And you, of course, happen to be innocently, as it's turned out, involved. Um, but yes, you, you had a hell of a race. All 50, the white group and the green group together. You qualified 19th because you couldn't be, you were too lazy to change your tyres for the rain. Is that about right? <laughs> No, it wasn't that I got one of these fancy apps that tells you when the weather's coming in the forecast apps, and it said there was no rain, it was going to be dry. And so I went That's a new driver's (laughs) excuse. That's added to the Bible of driver's (laughs) excuses. I used my weather app, which was wrong. Uh, So you're out on uh, tires without any tread at all. I know. And of course, we we talk about wet tires and dry tires. It just means well worn down are quicker in the dry and brand new are quicker in the wet, and you qualified a useless 19th. Yeah, so 10th on the grid because they combined the green group and the white group. So I was on the 10th row of the grid, but uh, we'll reveal all, I guess, but uh, in the video that's coming up, um, you were there, which was brilliant. Lovely to have you there again. Although you you snuck off off to the BRDC just... Oh, oh, yes. Watching the Grand Prix most of the time. Yes, well, yes, you know, saving the best till last. And luckily your race was up. But yeah, you got up to 10th for the first lap, then you're in this amazing, the group from... uh, in the second down to seventh was your just warfare going on, and uh, it looked great stuff to watch. You were coming three abreast down the straights, um, and then you were just you were about to take. You'd been in fourth briefly, um, and then you were about to go back into fourth when uh, another caterer veered into your path as the um, the stewards decided. Uh, it looked a fifty fifty, it was a clash, but it was very hard to tell from outside. But with the onboard cameras, um, you were you were collided into and uh, he got the penalty and you didn't well it's it's funny because he's he's very angry very upset as was i but i was i guess i was just a bit more humble about the whole thing for me it was obvious uh i uh, and we'll reveal all in the video for me it was so obvious uh he ran wide going into brooklyn's um and i went down the inside and then he tried to close the door and 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 hit me so it was it was as obvious as that but then you convince yourself but he was so angry and he was uh uh, so adamant that it was my fault, and he was the championship leader, I think, of the the white, group, uh, white uh, group at the time. So, um, yeah, and I, I don't think anybody ever is going to hit anybody purposely, and if they do, there's no place for them in motor racing anyway. But so I thought I did the. It was, it was probably one of many close calls yeah. in the previous. Every lap, every corner, you were you were close to colliding, and this time it just happened. Well, I went off the track twice, both because of this same guy. Funny enough, which is. <laughs> But, but I tried to, I tried to uh, and you didn't help issues by looking at it on uh, my girlfriend's phone and saying, oh, yeah, it did look <laughs> like you were quite aggressive. Well, from so where went, we were I, sitting here, look. <laughs> so I went and said to him, look, if there's any consolation, Tiff actually thinks that I was a little bit aggressive. If it was me, I sincerely apologise and, uh, you know, I would never, ever want to do anything to jeopardise anyone's uh, race, of course, especially a championship leader. Um, but that, sure enough, the stewards said the same as me, that uh, I, didn't even have, I didn't have to explain anything. They, they looked at the footage from the multiple, board, yeah. multiple on boards and previous laps, uh, and it was obvious he, he yeah. outbraked himself ever so slightly. We'll, 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 we'll come show to this controversy video. in Formula One as well, because it's, you know, in Formula yeah. One. The, I think the good thing is, you know, that you have these on boards nowadays, because self and a steward or an observer or a spectator like myself, you know, it depends which angle you're looking at. Uh, it can look one person more at fault than others, but it's when you get those onboard cameras that, that so much more is, re- is revealed. Anyway, we're all you, we're all armchair experts. We're all you armchair experts, <laughs> including you, because I trusted you, and you said, "Oh, you were a bit aggressive there, Paul. You know, <laughs> well, looked, maybe looked you, should have, you should have done that. Maybe you shouldn't have done that." It was from where I was looking. Yeah, exactly. Just, exactly. Just... But the but the Stewart's decision is final. Uh, which, but uh, you know, whichever way around, I did spin, so I don't even know where I ended up. But I know that it was we about an 11, amazing so race, you, amazing, amazing race. Yeah, the the yeah. atmosphere was amazing. Everybody had a, uh, well, most of us had a, had a brilliant time. 
uh, yeah. and um, and and great winners, great podiums, same sort of faces yeah. on the podiums, but it was it was great to see. I was good. I was pleased for Charlie Lower to get a win, um, but yeah. obviously not in that way where his championship rival uh, spanned out. But um, it was it was an amazing experience, and I think we're all very lucky to be racing around the Grand Prix circuit yeah, yeah. in Silverstone. So uh, a good good bucket list memory there. Anyway, so back to Austria, where it was a little less overtaking, but still a lot of controversy and penalties, points handed out by the stewards. Um, Max is now as boring as Lewis was for the last six or seven years. Isn't it funny that whole, how it's reversed? It's incredible. That's disappearing. <laughs> Perez must be um, beginning to be worried about Red Bull. Red Bull has run out of people to put in the, the number two to Max. But you think, you know, um, Albon was nearly winning that Austrian Grand Prix last year before a clash at the corner, which became the corner for clashes all weekend. Um, and it, Sergio, I suppose he'd probably hold on to the seat because there's nobody else now queued up to try and get a... But, you know, unless your number two gets ahead of the Mercedes, that's the whole point that they need at Red Bull, is, is a number two that, that can run ahead and take points Absolutely. away from Mercedes. And sadly, it's still not working for Sergio. But, of course, he got pushed or he wasn't pushed. Uh, he was going for fourth place with Lando on the opening laps. And it is this going round the outside, which Albon, of course, was doing to, to Hamilton before Hamilton tapped him and, and therefore he lost what probably would have been a Grand Prix win. Um, I think everyone's been to realise that with all the runoffs we've had, this has been going on for four or five or six years. People go round the outside because they know they can bail out and continue the overtaking manoeuvre and then maybe get told to drop behind because you overtook off the track. But now, of course, you're in the gravel track, which we all want to see. But the, the hanging on round the outside is... It doesn't work. And in the old days of motorsport, you knew that. Therefore, you had to back out before you got to the, the, the pinch point. Uh, so, you know, I think Lando shouldn't have been penalised. And, and, you know, maybe Perez, you know, shouldn't have been penalised later on when he put Leclerc out. Yeah. Um, but it's just that, you know, you do hang on around the outside. Because, of course, if you're on the inside, you've got to back. You're almost giving the place away. If you have to give him a car's width of room on the exit, which is the so-called rule they're working on, You've got to back off so much off the throttle because you're, you're breaking down the inside. So all someone has to do now is come down level with you on your left. Then you've apparently got to give them room, which um, makes it a very easy overtake. So this will evolve, I think, as the drivers complain about getting penalised and a lot of the team managers, I mean, uh, you know, going against it. So but anyway, great run for Max. But of course, Lando was really the story of the weekend, he was uh, not well, just for the... The, the clash with Perez, but uh, for qualifying second, so nearly a pole position, and then just oh, racing well, with the Mercedes. Yeah. Amazing. It's so is that is that Lando or is that Mercedes? I guess they uh, or, or uh, McLaren. I guess they've just hooked it all yeah, up McLaren together. And, you know, and Ricciardo then, that, yeah. poor qualified. Ricciardo came up better, yeah. so Ricciardo's getting closer. But uh, Lewis, of course, fell off over the big curb trying to stay with Max and damaged his car, lost a lot of downforce. So he's getting ruffled now and um, it's all beginning to get interesting. <laughs> it's all kicking <laughs> off. Do you know one of the most interesting shame. things was that you were hobnobbing uh, up at Silverstone in a Rolls Royce Phantom this weekend. Well, uh, or well, last that's week. Occasionally. And, yeah, and, and took it up to Silverstone. I can't believe that the Rolls Royce Phantom is a huge car. I can't yeah. believe the dimensions of yeah. that are the same as a modern day Formula One car. That is just <laughs> Formula One car is as long as and as wide as a Rolls Royce Phantom. Incredible. It just shows how. And if you've ever seen a if you've ever seen a Rolls Royce Phantom up close, you just uh, um, the first thing anyone says about that car is, "Wow, <laughs> it's huge! It's incredible!" And and that video will be coming to YouTube with Tiff Nadell at the helm. That's quite a good description. George Russell, of course. Yeah, George, George Russell. George Russell, another star again. And Alonso, he was always... It was George deserved the point, George. by the way, didn't he? He deserved yeah, the point. Well, but Fernando <laughs> said he was almost felt guilty overtaking him. We had to go out and apologise for taking the final point. And then we had that bizarre, right at the end, two former world champions battling over 13th spot, managed to drive into each other. Kimmy was to blame, and I think he got the stewards. I think everybody agrees. For some reason, Kimmy didn't think, you know, Seb was going to move to the left as much as he did, and they clashed front wheel onto rear and... Uh, did you see Honestly. Kimmy on Friday qualifying, what he did with his um, no. gesture? I think he's been watching my catering video because he did oh, that. No. Oh, he did that on Friday qualifying. Kimmy, I do not condone that whatsoever. He's, he's allowed to, you're not. Right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so that was good. So it, was, anyway. it, was, 
it was okay. Where, where are they off to next, Tiff, uh, in terms of Formula One? Well, British Grand Prix now. Two, two weeks, weeks. Yeah. yeah, two weeks. Two weeks. Of weeks. Amazing. Lots of good support race, the W Series and Formula Three. And the, the Brits won again. This time, Jamie Chadwick took the top step of the podium. She and, was uh, by the, uh, off, the, off the pole position, of course, and then off the line, she... Uh, dominated, yeah. dominated. And Alice Powell had lots of problems with her cars, she was saying, in, in, in practice and qualifying. Qualified well down, but recovered to uh, get back up to where eights only, dropped to third in the championship. Jamie now leads the championship. In fact, Britain are one, two and three because um, uh, Sarah Moore, who finished fourth, she's second in the championship. So we're doing well in Formula Women. or W Series, I keep on slipping up and calling it Formula Women for the past. Uh, Abby Eaton got to sixth, had a better race in the previous weekend, was Jess Hawkins down in 16th. But, I think uh, Abby Eaton's going to get better be and better and stronger and stronger. She's, yeah, because she's she, my the others top have all, Yeah, the others have all had a year. You know, Abby's yeah. the new girl amongst the pack. So, uh, yeah, fascinating stuff. Formula 3, the usual sprint race rubbish. <laughs> but the, actually, Don't the first you mince your words. Don't oh, mix, mince your words, but, will you? The first, I was delighted because the first print race, the pole position for the feature race on Sunday, um, Dennis Hauger actually got through from 12th where he was dumped and won the first sprint race. So it's quite nice when that happens, um, even though it's <laughs> rare to do. The second sprint race, though, absolutely summed up for me what I hate about sprint races. Because David Schumacher, son of Ralph, nephew of, of Michael, he qualified 14th. He was the 14th best Formula 3 driver. His best ever result is 11th in two years of Formula 3 race. He never finished by the 11th. And in the first sprint race, he ended up 17th on the road. Got up to 12th because of five drivers being penalised for track limits or other problems. And 12th gave him pole for the second sprint race, which he managed to stay out front and win. So Amazing. David Schumacher, with his best ever result, 11th, is now a Formula 3 winner. Amazing. And I just... I, I, I just... You're going to see it next needs to be in brackets. <laughs> they shouldn't be allowed to say I'm a Formula 3 winner. I'm a reverse grid winner. Um, but the final race, the feature race, is a fabulous race, you know, with the under meritocracy, the fastest guys out front. That's what these young drivers, they need. They need a season to show I'm the fastest of Formula 3 driver. Do. I've won 12 races, not, you know, 10, 20 different winners that I think the organisers would like. It's not BTCC, FIA. It's a serious yeah. single-seater formula. It is, it is serious. And, and you so, know, just this silly... Well, it's not silly. I, I don't want to uh, belittle Caterham Academy at all because it is, you know, but, but it's a fun series, what we're doing. But still, yeah. you know, you, you, this other chap that uh, that went into me, he's probably not going to win the championship now for, or, uh, because of that. And, and he's distraught. So when you've got all that money and time and effort and you're racing and you want to get into Formula One or IndyCar, whatever you do... Yeah. Yeah, it's serious stuff. So mm. for these guys, especially. So I agree with you. Meritocracy is that the way right? Pronounced yeah, you it? want that. Formula two and Formula three, the serious formulas. And uh, these two kids, it was the, the Mercedes uh, protege beat the Red Bull protege. <laughs> and the Danish point, the Danish guy Frederick Vesti, Scandinavian battle up front. Vesti, the Merck kid, beat pole man Dennis Hauger from uh, Norway. So it was a great race in Formula three with Britain. Ollie Caldwell, of course, in third place. A great podium for Ollie. So. I like the feature race better than the sprint. So sprints are fun to watch, like British touring cars, but I just don't think they're right in places where these kids have they worked so hard to get the sponsorship, you know, for these vital years in their careers. And um, if they end up reverse gridded, anyway, plenty of action. Plenty of action. Where else and do we talk, go? Talking plenty of action. There's no MotoGP that it was World Superbikes at Donington, yeah. which is an exciting track. And and no, no MotoGP for a month now. The Finnish Grand Prix was cancelled because of COVID. So in fact, the MotoGP boys got about six weeks off. So yeah, the only bikes was the World Superbikes, as you <laughs> said, at Donington. Where uh, who who won who won the race and is now <laughs> leading the championship? Paul, I don't know. And no, I no. Watch it. I was too busy trying. Even to... if you knew, you probably wouldn't be able to pronounce the Turkish rider. Top track. Razgatliogu. I'm Ooh. glad you oh, I nearly said... got it in one. I know that. Very good. Your pronunciation is very Topa. good with different names. Razgatlioglu. Razgatlioglu. A tremendous Donny's amazing race. Ray won the second race, I think, and Raz was the first race, the big final race. Uh, Ray was out leading, you know, our champion who dominates Superbikes for so many years, and he dropped it uh, under the pressure from Top Prak, and uh, he now leads the championship. So this is a form where we've dominated for years and years. But uh, So the British domination Turkish is under run. attack. Yeah. Whoa. On our home soil as well. Um, <laughs> anything more on that, or should we head over to IndyCar? Yeah, then, yes, there wasn't actually much uh, you know, British racing or else in Europe. So IndyCar at Mid-Ohio, a very scenic track, 
very different overtake. It's you know one of the least overtaking IndyCar circuits. And this time, Joseph Newgarten, who had two failures in the last two races, which he dominated, uh, finally got through the win, no problem at all. Marcus Ericsson, who showed that his Detroit win wasn't a fluke, came, was chasing him at the end, catching in second place. Alex Palou, the, the Spanish kid, I think he's probably still leading the championship, was third. No joy for the Brits at all. We had uh, Max Chilton and Jack Harvey down in 18th and 19th. Uh, so we need to stir them up. Grosjean, he's, he's going to get a win soon, a steady seventh. There was one moment, if you watch the IndyCar, which you all ought to do more, he tried to go around outside with someone else at the horseshoe corner. And he obviously got the dirt, and he actually sort of opposite, he actually power slid around <laughs> with one wheel on the dirt and held on to it. In the sort of, which you can do with an IndyCar. Formula One car, that would have been spun, he would have been out. But uh, it's great to see. Roman's really loving IndyCar. What's the difference? Why can you do that in IndyCar, not in Formula One? Well, the shorter wheelbase helps. You know, the long wheelbase means as soon as you get too much slip angle, you're gone. You, know, you can't hold it. a shorter car. You can slide sideways easier. Uh, but also the weight of the car and the, and the power delivery and so much more makes the cars, uh, you know, more drivable. Hence, the driver element is, is more important than the chassis. Um, so yeah, the NASCAR. What, what what was that bloke's name that you'll you'll be number five, five? Kyle didn't win. Kyle last <laughs> he led very briefly, but he wasn't quite on the pace because the NASCARs went to the Road America. I think it's the yeah. first time in about thirty years the top division, the, the Cup cars, have been to Road America, uh, and they looked amazing round there. And uh, you know it was not as exciting because they can't overtake that that often round Road America, but it was still great racing. Always nose to tail, nose to tail. There's one corner at the end of the first long straight where they're always dive bombing and running out of brakes. American commentators and all the racing tr um, drivers, they call it, when they call rear wheel locking, um, wheel hopping. He's wheel hopping, which I suppose <laughs> when the rear wheels lock, it has the effect, <laughs> you know, yeah. so good, good, and, you, and you run out. And they're all disappearing up the street, up the uh, straight, going off the road. And Kyle was actually clobbered by his teammate who wheel hopped into the back of him. Um, with a brake problem, which dropped. A car was running about fifth or sixth then, but he dropped to the back. But uh, amazingly, uh, uh, Kyle Bush in qualifying, I love these stories. I mean, you imagine this in Formula One. He, he lost control and crashed on the big, the, the kink, as they call it, going onto the back straight. And because his front suspension was broken, it, there's about a quarter of a lap back to the pits. He <laughs> reversed all the way back to the pits. Can you imagine, imagine in Formula that One? In Formula they'd one. be banned for two years. <laughs> But um, Kyle Busch, of course, he's the only one. He won last last week, wasn't he? Had his win. He's the only one because the winner at um, Road America was another Hendrick Motorsport car, Chase Elliott, well known for being good on road course. He started at the backs so in qualifying problems, so Chase Elliott came for a great win for the um, Hendrick Motorsports. The they've now with Chevy. Kyle Larson's the same team, the Chevy. Yeah, they've won yeah. eight out of the last nine races, and only Kyle Busch has got in their way. So with Larson and Elliott. And the other two teammates, uh, Hendrix Motorsport at the moment, is just on a roll. And what's this about the, other... the last ever H pattern racing car? You yeah, I love it. Well, I was watching the onboards, you know, and you see, and you see it so much, you know, yeah. <laughs> changing gear. And they've got an old four speed H pattern box. It's amazing how many corners they're going down to first gear. Because obviously, you know, they, they have to gear up for all the other corners down the straights. So quite often they're down to first gear and they're healing and towing or with their left foot breaking, they're blipping the throttle. We had cameras on board live looking at their feet on the pedals. Brilliant. I mean, they do television so much better often than in Europe. You know, the Indy cars with their swivel cameras, when you're overtaking someone, the camera turns, you're looking side on to the guy. They do present their telly well. See, I would so love to see that with Formula One. I would love to see that. You know, yeah. are, are they, they healing changing? Yeah, do they even no, heal and no. toe in Formula no, 1? No, they just no. pull a little flappy paddle okay. and the engine revs itself. Uh, it's course, got auto blip, yeah, you know, course. so that's why it's change up, change down, change up, change down. Of course. It, Sorry, I'm having to do, <laughs> take your hand off the wheel, it's yeah. all another skill, you know, a, a quarter, you sometimes get <laughs> to short shift before a quarter because you can get through the quarter yeah. without changing gear. But of course, next year, they're the new car for next year, they're, they're changing, they're going to still change gear with their hands, which is nice. They're getting the sequential um, punch actions. They'll just be going down, 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 up, up, up. Um, so this is probably the last year where you'll see an H pattern uh, gearbox in a, in a serious, in a top motorsport championship. It was just great to watch them snapping yeah. through the gears. So tell me this then, uh, Mr. Nadell, uh, how many current Formula One drivers on the grid would be left foot braking only? 
all of them now because Everything you can't one. every they, they build the cars now you, okay. you've got i'm pretty sure nobody ever does it because when i drove the williams grand prix car in 2005 you know for a blast and uh rocky the most memorable fifth gear item i did that's brilliant um With i Vicky. got in here because I was a right front breaker. When I sat in in the workshop, oh, blum, <laughs> I had no option. I didn't tell them I don't use left foot braking. So it was quite a... But yeah, that's the thing about football. Your, your feet just sit in a box each and your hands are just on a paddle each. So a lot of that effort and concentration, things you can do wrong, missing a gear, have just gone from a Grand Prix driver and Formula 2 and Formula 3. Um, so it's sort of compulsory left foot breaker. They all do it in karting. So they just, you know, they, they didn't know how to use their right foot to break heel and toe. So, yeah, it was great to see. I love NASCAR. I know it's, I know it's old ancient stuff. I mean, next year they're going to centre lock wheels, way, you know, wow. and, and ca carbon fibre bodywork. I mean, they're really going a bit into the future in NASCAR next year. We'll miss that lovely, you know, taking the five nuts off of every world. Well, 20 nuts if you if you add up on the four wheels and uh, it's a lovely know, sound isn't it in the pits where you hear that with the yeah. with the drill guns and stuff it's, it's and then, the, the drama of a nascar pit stop it's yeah. so much better for them like you can see i know you love your two second grand prix <laughs> pit stops well you can't see what anybody does because they're all going there's so many people around the car but when you see a guy with, with a trolley jack running around the car but I mean, it's just brilliant it's you know, that's part of the racing i don't care if it's you know ancient history or it's not high tech i don't but, you know you jack, you jack up your road car you you jack up your catering with a trolley jack you know you haven't got you know it's automatic brilliant. brakes or... it's absolutely brilliant so, it doesn't have to be high tech to be exciting and and, yeah. you know, and and not just for the driver but for the spectator as well for the spectator well and the pit crews you know the, the pit crews can earn you two or three places of a pit stop in nascar and it's it's entertainment it's all part of the show and we want to we all want a good show not lots of penalties because you push someone to the gravel when it was the bloke was going around the outside of you's fault anyway. Yeah. Okay. So um, a little bit quiet this week coming up, this weekend coming up. There's no F1 because yeah. uh, you're right. It's going to Silverstone in two weeks' time. Uh, no MotoGP until the end of August. That until August, not the end of August. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Incredible. But the only only thing I can see in, in Europe is the um, the British GT at Donington. So it's a, I think there's some world touring cars going on and the new electric touring cars. But as I don't like world touring cars because they're boring front wheel drive shopping trolleys, um, <laughs> I haven't highlighted that. But I think there is some world touring cars going on and the debut of a of an electric touring car. Which I'll watch to see how electric racing okay, is developing. Let's, fe let's feature that next week then. Let's see how it goes. That means I'm, you mean I've got to look at it then? If you have got to watch it. it, you just said you're going to oh, watch come it. Come on. Well, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm just, you know read the story. So the most of the action's over over in America. We've got um, the NASCARs are back on their own in Atlanta, and a great street. IndyCar's Toronto up in Canada street, one of the best street car street races. It's got a huge long straight down to a dead end hairpin. It's usually very spectacular. So if you can get to watch IndyCar Toronto. And isn't Otherwise, Formula E, isn't it going to New York? Yep. Yeah, great. Also if, in, and, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't have a dig at Formula E. We always seem to be digging at it. I mean, maybe we should let it be for a while and, and give up on it. But it drives me mad when they, the, it's the hype that annoys me the most. You know, in the streets of New York, you know, this was his street. No, it's not. It's on the Brooklyn cruise terminal car park area, you know, and it's in Brooklyn. It's not in Manhattan, you know. And it, it, I mean, some of it, are roads that access the, the terminals. So there are some genuine streets involved. But it's mainly like in the docks, you know, and in, in London, it's going to be in the XL Museum. It's, still it's not in going to be New the York. streets. New York is a state as well as the city. So <laughs> it's not just Manhattan. It's a New York state. One of the biggest states. The capital is Albany, not New York City, believe it or not. So there you go. Ooh. A bit of trivia. Get you with the and for those of you that are listening and not watching, Tiff and I have our uh, Love Cars blue uh, polo shirts on today, matching uh, blue polo shirts. Mm. Yeah, mm. looking good there. Yours, yours a bit smarter than mine, no doubt a freebie from a golf day. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Thanks Ooh, as look, always someone, for look, listening. Oh, yeah, exactly. Someone's sponsored. free shirts. Let's give them thanks for your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks so great. Grand, Prix, Grand Prix was, you know, exciting again, so it's, it's good racing catering was really exciting it's been, it's been a good exciting but some controversy in all the, the races i sadly i seem to attract the controversy although that's what people think anyway i'm just minding my own business trying to have a good time do the right thing and because you're such like, a quiet and shy person it's so surprising that they think you're stirring things up anyway on that note 
<laughs> Thanks for joining. See you next week. Bye.